Okay, where we are in the procedure now, we have to make sure that we are set up for a failover cluster and application server and that we verify it. So, let's add under features failover clustering. Next, install. Do the same thing on node 2, add feature failover clustering. Next. After that's done we have to also make sure that uh, we have application server in installed on it. We have to enable remote desktop. So let's just go over that again one more final time. Allow connections. Yes. Apply Go down to Start, Administrative Tools, and Remote Desktop Services, Remote Desktop Session Host Configuration. Go down here, right click on Single Session Properties. Restrict each user? No. Apply. OK. <coughs> and that is done. OK. Failover clustering is installed. Close. Add role. Next. <coughs> we need to add application server. Yes. Next. Now, to set up an, a SQL database um, failover cluster, at the very least, you need to enable incoming and outgoing remote transactions. I'm just going to uh, click off a bunch of stuff. because I have no idea how the guys are going to be using create self-signed certificate for SSL no idea how the guys want to use this install do the same thing on node 2 oops I didn't click install on that I'll pause this and when um, When it's done, I'll come back. OK, on node 1, application server finished installing. On node 2, likewise, failover clustering finished. Um, I'll show you since um, I forgot, I'll show you one more time. Application server, add, next, next. We've got to have as a minimum incoming and outgoing remote transactions, <coughs> excuse me, for a cluster. Right. And I'll pause it again. <coughs> I will be right back. Okay. <coughs> I believe we are completely ready to do a validation of our configuration to see if it's suitable for clustering. And if you really took note of what was happening all through this, there are actually quite a few different things that you needed to know to configure something like this. And um, I think that I'm just going to go for it and test it. Let's go to Start, Administrative Tools, Failover Cluster Manager. Waiting for it to start up. There it is. All right, we just want to validate our setup here. So you click on Validate a Configuration. Next. Click on Browse. Go to Advanced. Find Now. You don't want the domain controller in the test. You want to test the nodes. Only the nodes. Click OK. Node 1 and Node 2 are in there they will appear in here, node 1 and node 2 on the A plus local domain. Click Next. Do you want to run all tests? Yes we do. 
You can select specific tests. Um, the validation tool can be used for troubleshooting and maintenance later on when the cluster is aging and in production. For instance, if you uh, reconfigured the disks and needed to test the disks, you can run only those tests. But we'll run them all. Let's go. Next. And this is just going back and forth. It's talking to node 1, testing the network, whatever is required. I'll leave the recording running so you can witness the whole thing. It should be done soon. Only takes a minute when it's a uh, simple setup like this. When you've got several, several hard disks and it's over a network, it can take a while. Testing is completed successfully. The com configuration appears suitable for clustering. However, you should review the report because it may contain warnings. Yeah, I know it contains warnings. It's probably all on the hard drive. <coughs> yeah, disk latency, the disk's arbitration, failover. There's nothing for failover. So that, that's what the warnings are about. But it's saying that the fundamental setup is good. We know we've got to configure the disks, so that's next. Um, I'm going to set up and get ready to demonstrate setup of iSCSI 3 disks. I shall return. Okay. <coughs> Plugging in my memory stick. and it will be detected by VMware. connecting the USB device. <coughs> See it's installing the driver and there it is. Alright, and I need this to be copied. Oh, actually, you know what? I've got to put it on the domain controller. See I'm in the wrong machine. Removable devices, Kingston disk, disconnect. I'm going over to that was the sound of it leaving the VMware machine and going back on the host machine. But now I'm going to connect it to the domain controller. Witness again. Okay, very good. Nice. And I need this. <coughs> Copying it to the desktop <coughs> and just like in a real machine you can disconnect it also. What this will do <coughs> is extract the software to a directory on the root of the hard drive. Run. Like I said, there's a bit more hesitation in a uh, virtual machine like this because this machine in particular isn't um, I don't need to read the instructions on this. <coughs> I'm going to go here, computer, C drive, iSCSI target, 
and this is 64 bit and I'm going to install it next <clears throat> of course you accept the terms nope nope install very good finish close close now after we configure some virtual iSCSI drives here on the domain controller and right there's the software we just installed Microsoft iSCSI software target <clears throat> after we configure some virtual drives um, we will use um, the iSCSI initiator on nodes 1 and 2. That'll allow the servers to connect to the SCSI targets being served from the domain controller. But first, I think what I want to do is I've got to create an extra hard drive because we're going to use about 60 gigs of space in configuring drives for the um, for the SQL servers. So I want to add a hard disk, create a new virtual disk. It will be SCSI and I want it to be 60 gigs. Allocate all disk and store as a single file. Okay. And as you see, it's a uh, DC0 virtual drive. And just like any other drive, you have to format it. So let's go into Disk Server Management and Disk Manager so that we can bring the new drive online, for format it and make it available for use in the SCSI target software. Come on now, I clicked. I want it to come up. Come on now. Go to storage. Go to disk management. taking a moment to read the data and here is our new disk first you've got to bring it online then you initialize it leave it a master boot record then you want to create a new simple volume say yes use the entire space Next. format it with NTFS volume label SQL drive next finish and it's formatting <coughs> and in a moment it will be available there it is SQL drive now we've mounted a drive new drive Now we're ready to configure some uh, disk space. 